as a Kenyan and uh, never interested in uh, politics, I know that we can contribute uh, as a private citizen and as well as uh, the opportunity to be re in charge of the, of the sector. And that's why I'm looking that we can do the best we can. Because if you look at the at, the, at our uh, GDP, it is a shame we could do better than this. Um, I'm not only talking about IT, but if you look at agriculture, you look at other sectors, for example. And I know, for example, IT, which cuts across all sectors, can actually improve uh, in terms of creating efficiencies, in terms of improving productivity, and in terms of uh, seeing that a lot of our youth are employed. Uh, your life is only as safe as uh, how many of the youth who are in employment, because if they are not in employment, they would actually come to kill you. So I am a stakeholder in this country who would want to see that all our youth have jobs and uh, I can do it from whichever angle that I will be. I'm just here by accident as a permanent secretary. But I used to do it when I was a lecturer at the university. It's only that I did not have the visibility for people to see like this. Uh, and I would continue to do it even when I've left office uh, as a permanent secretary. Most countries, like uh, Japan for example, how they succeeded, they had to create dormitories where people would go and they are trained on what to do. Korea, uh, everybody goes through the military before they get into employment. Singapore, the same thing. If you look at the US, Britain, most of the people go through the military and go through the level of discipline that is in the military and also learn the values uh, that work in the private sector. We cannot continue getting kids from school direct into employment. Uh, we must begin to change. That is why we have problems. We've been talking about the corruption for so many, so many years. And practically you are expected to be corrupt because people expect that once you are in a senior position, you will create employment, you, you will do this and that. For us to change it, we must deal with it consciously. We will never change it if we are just talking. Uh, we have it in the Constitution now. Implementation would mean that we must have a program from primary, from kindergarten, where people are trained, are taught about value system. Being simply honest, being simply honest about what you're doing. Because th this is, these are the problems that creep in later on in life. Uh, it must be in our DNA as we grow up the children and, uh, and, uh, and forget about the shortcuts in life. Uh, because if you talk to high school kids, uh, they have seen somebody who has stolen money. They also want to make quick money. Why would they waste uh, time working? So work ethic is number one, which we must have through either inculcating it through the military or, or through other means. For me, I support uh, that we either go through the national youth or the military uh, before they go to another level. There is one year we waste at home. If we put these kids somewhere and take them through the several of the projects, we have several places in, the, in this country that have no roads, they could be doing it. Uh, but in, in, the, in the process, you are inculcating those values. This is what other countries did to grow. We are not going to get a shortcut. We must address it head on several, several times, uh, practically every, everywhere in the world. It's called a triple helix, the government, the research institution, the universities, and the private sector must work together. You will never succeed until you bring those together. The building of CONSA means that we can have all three working together because we are building a research, a science and technology, and then IT enable services plus the government. You bring them together to work together because you will never sustain economic growth if you don't have an R&D unit, if you don't get professors to do <coughs> research and development. This is what every country is doing. Uh, look at Korea, for example. 
<coughs> moving from number 77 in the world to number 11, they had to invest heavily on research. Whatever things they were doing, and they began to do research, and now they are number three, after US, Britain, Japan, and now Korea, the third one. So they did it consciously to, to be like that. We don't have to, to recreate the wheel. Uh, we can just learn from these newly industrialized countries. China was doing the same. <clears throat> China started by uh, reverse engineering. Now they are heavily investing in research and actually doing better research than other countries. Even if we started to do reverse engineering, some of the things we want to do in Konza is to, to manufacture light electronic equipment. But we must begin to do research on those so that we can sustain the growth. Uh, that must be done. There is no shortcut, by the way. We will never grow the economy through agriculture. Yeah? We can modify agriculture and improve its productivity with ICTs, which means we are in putting new applications which we must sustain through research. <clears throat> I used to teach entrepreneurship at the university. Uh, first solve his problem. You know, ask someone what what are the problems you have. Uh, you, you know, we have a problem in this country. If I buy matatu, he will buy a matatu. He will buy a matatu. He will buy a matatu. Then you flood the market. None of you gets the money. Uh, when the financial uh, applications came, everybody is doing a financial application, and yet there are several other areas where you can deploy. Like I said. Uh, the commodities exchange, for example, uh, which is which is a green area. Insurance, nobody has done anything. We have not done anything in transport. You know, um, I used to have a matatu also when I was uh, a lecturer because it was a quick way of getting a few cents. I now realize I would have actually made more money if I used to, you see these small cameras in the phone. If I put them on the vehicle inside the vehicle and monitor the vehicle through GPS, I would know how many passengers were carried. And these people would have to pay me because I know the passengers who are seated in the car from the GPS. Uh, but nobody has done that application. We are still uh, seated here until an Indian comes with it and sells it to us here. But you could do it using GPS. Uh, we have government data which is out there, which through uh, GPS, you can very, very easily, very easily be able to know precisely where the farmer is. You are able to advise on fertilizer. You are able to advise on productivity. Why would a farmer in, in Kangundo grow maize where they harvest one tin when they can grow cassava and harvest 20 sacks of it and exchange with somebody in Kitale who, have, who has harvested 30 bags from one egg? You see, the, this is the numbers. That's why I said we must get into numbers. When we die, we say Arirowa. When we know in CC2, we have not, we have not exploited our knowledge to, to be able. The government has enabled us, given us uh, the data, given us the infrastructure, given us the brains of young people in this country. It's just to combine that and create uh, something else, a different world, a different country. Yeah.